Hello, Guardians. Today is November 4th, 2022. My name's Dan Finity, and welcome to Destiny Digest. Thanks so much for coming in, hanging out with us every week. We have a special season of Plunder Gambit panel with Mechatron and previous guest Revenant coming around the corner. On a personal note, I just became partnered with glasses maker Gamer Advantage. Take care of your eyes, game hard, sleep hard, and use my code DAN at checkout to enjoy 10% off your next order of glasses, chamois, or anti-fog solution. Thanks again, Gamer Advantage, for the opportunity. If you're enjoying the show so far, please remember to rate and review on your podcast platform of choice. It's free and helps us in the rankings algorithms. We are also listener supported. So if you'd like to spare a couple bucks to help keep the lights on, head on over to coffee.com forward slash Danfinity to support there. To start the week, Hotfix 6.2.5.2 dropped on Tuesday, bringing fixes to solo, flawless dungeon triumph descriptions, Lord of Wolves buffing ability damage as well as weapon damage, and sources for two shaders, Angel's Gleam and Flower Child. This week at Bungie, we got a girthy TWAB featuring balances to subclasses across the light and dark spectrums coming into Season 19. Bungie did acknowledge that any large-scale tuning would take place post-Lightfall DLC launch in order to also add the upcoming Strand subclass into the balance conversation. This pass coming in Season 19 is to bring outlier subclasses more in line to create a baseline for future tuning. There were a lot of notes, there were a lot of descriptions, and a lot of numbers flying around, so right now we're just going to go ahead and hit the greatest hits. Restoration, both times one and times two, will see their healing rate reduced across the board and will no longer stack with healing rift, instead prioritizing the stronger healing ability. Both Golden Gun and Blade Barrage will take a hit to the knock em down aspect, further refining the power fantasies as well as reducing uptime for dead shot gunslingers. The Void Overshield's benefit was only giving half of its intended protection, so they are bringing it up to its full potential in Season 19 with a meaty 50% PvE damage resistance. Warlock's Vortex Nova Bomb sees a buff to compete with Cataclysm, and Hunter's Shadow Shot Deadfall Anchor Lifetime was increased over Mobius Quiver with a special note that Deadfall will be a more attractive option after Divinity gets a planned damage bonus nerf. For the Arc subclasses, Touch of Thunder Grenades will see reductions in effect duration as well as a new friend or foe indicator. Titan's Ballistic Slam will get a buff in PvE, and Warlock Arc Souls will get a significant buff to make them more competitive in endgame PvE sandboxes. The Warlock Super Chaos Reach will receive a 1 minute and 45 second reduction in base cooldown as well. And finally, on Stasis, we will see an increased movement speed penalty while slowed by 10%, and the Cold Snap Seeker Grenades will now adjust their trajectory to find foes half a second after creation. In Dungeon News, Friday, December 9th at 9am PDT will be the release date for the new journey, with more details to come. And for a full rundown of the TWAB, please visit the show notes. Quick shout before we move on to our panel this episode, be sure to check out this week's PvE Podcast vs. Enemies episode with featured Bungie weapons team members Vivian Bex and Chris Proctor. A lot of excellent insight, as is to be expected from a Destiny Massive Breakdown show, and one you won't want to miss if you're interested in PvE endgame. Now, on to the Season 18 State of Gambit panel with Mechatron and Revenant. Last week, I posted I posted a thread about uh, about Gambit and mainly my frustrations with with Gambit as as a as a mode, uh, and especially as one of the core playlists in Destiny Two right now. Um, and so I was like, they should make it like Iron Banner. It should only come around like once or twice every every season, and then you're done with it. Like you, it's it's a whole thing. Uh, that spawned some this is like sizable reaction, <laughs> especially amongst folks yep. who are very passionate about the game mode. And um, when I thought of people to invite, um, I thought of Silver and Rev immediately, just because like I I've seen you guys be very vocal about it um, in in the past. Silver, sadly, mm-hmm. like 
but while we were trying to move mountains, <laughs> we sadly weren't <laughs> able to get get the mountain that uh, Silver had to walk over. So she'll be invited for another panel uh, sometime in the future. But um, in that, we have Mechatron. Hi, Mechatron. Thank hey. you so much for joining. Thank um, you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So um, what we're going to do here. Uh, first things first. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves uh, at the start in case people don't make it to the end <laughs> of the conversation? <laughs> uh, like <laughs> with uh, with who you are and where they can find you on the Internet. Uh, Mech, let's start with you. OK, hello. My name is Mechatron. If you haven't heard that already, um, my. Well, first things first, I, I play a lot of Gambit, as you can tell, since I've joined this conversation. <laughs> I've been playing Destiny 2 since about 2019. Unfortunately, I did not start with Destiny 1, but I love the game nonetheless. Mm -hmm. um, Gambit was actually the game mode that I felt like I was like starting to get confident with the game. But either way, you could actually find me on Twitter at M3CCATR0N. Same thing for Twitch as well, but I am currently on a hiatus just taking care of mental health. But hopefully you see me back soon, but I'm on the game almost daily. Heck yeah. Rev, what about you? I just live on Twitter, mate. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't stream, I don't do YouTube content. I'm just on Twitter. So Yet. That's all. He says that now. <laughs> Eventually See, he'll do it. We're not, we're not, we're not doing that here, mate. He'll nah. do it eventually. Just, just give him time. Uh, yeah, slowly get him into it. <laughs> just implemented it as mine. Hey, man. So, stream. <laughs> I guess um, the pr the promise of Gambit in 2018 was that it would be a game mode and a playlist that would bring with it the best of destiny 2's pve and destiny 2's pvp um and i i was at uh gcx 2018 when that when it was live when the when they tested it there and they and they showed a bunch of people how like there was lines six hours long <laughs> i didn't play it there because i was like i'm not going i'm not spending six hours while i'm at a convention <laughs> 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 just <laughs> out of town to yeah. wait in line to play play Gambit. But uh, I know reactions there were very positive. Um, it's, it, with I, I think they might have had like a limited... Um, they might have had limited weapons and, and loadouts for for it going into that. And so when 2018 came around, it, had a, it was kind of like a huge deal. There were four maps? Four maps? Uh, I believe there were four yeah. maps initially. Yes, there were. Yes. Yeah, and then, about four. Yeah. Yeah, and so they had not only not only did it have four maps, but it also kind of brought that promise uh, to the sandbox where you could pick up any weapon and run, right? Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they fixed it over time. They've added inter iterations um of it as Gambit, Gambit Prime, um, and then Season of the Drifter happened, and I feel like that's probably where I fell off the Gambit train because it was just okay. a okay. large. Uh, it was it was too much Gambit, <laughs> like it, it was like here's Gambit, here's a lot of Gambit, here's more Gambit than you could even possibly want. Uh, Fair enough, and and I think um, that's where my stigma lies with it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I will say, uh, what are what are your opinions? Uh, I I'm just, okay. Hold on. So I played a little bit yesterday, and that probably mm. was the most fun that I've had in Gambit. Okay. Like, okay. I just going in. I was it. The the seasonal challenges bother me, but the game mode itself didn't bother me as much. So okay. my next cool. question is. Where do you guys find yourself this season? <laughs> How are you enjoying uh, it? I personally don't like where Gambit is at the moment. Mm. It feels far too slow paced from what it used to be. Mm. It feels um, 
it feels very heavy ammo dependent to the point where it's a primary weapon so why do i need one mm. granted the pv meta is double special plus a heavy but that's exacerbated even further in gambit given everybody gets a free ammo crate every time mm. you clear a wave and when you when you send your invader over trying to get for the for the hard way which was a triumph is pretty much impossible nowadays because you get two tap by Xeno, you get parasited you got thunderlord you've got first portal goldies or t crashes to contend with mm. it's it's a lot harder it's a lot more stale because everybody uses the same stuff mm. right and that's why i don't like it there's no there's no diversity anymore like if you remove heavy ammo which is something <laughs> admittedly i do want that um because i'm sick and tired of using xeno um <laughs> i saw a lot of that yesterday i was Relatable. also using that yesterday because i was like i need a seasonal challenge and this seems to be one tapping just about any enemy yep. <laughs> that, mm -hmm. that walks in so <laughs> i'm gonna why, be why fight the matter why fight it i'm gonna be scum right. with everybody else here's the so, right um you have many senses around the ammo crate situation like mm. granted you could put on you could put on uh finders and scavs and go to town with a double special loadout mm -hmm. or heavy handed quick charge if you're running shotguns fusions right um and you could run and gun to your heart's content. It was meant to be fast paced. You need to clear those ad waves. So you send your next guy over. But now it's everybody goes to that purple that purple brick. They all pick it up and then they go to the next wave. It slows down the pace of the game. It does. Which in its current format, it's the first time it's happened. Mm -hmm. And it's boring. Mm. Like there's times where I I just don't care. I'm just gonna go to the next wave because my my build can now clear that wave. Yeah. So I don't need the ammo unless I'm invading or anteing. So yeah. Right. Uh, right. Mech, what about you? Okay, so as as positive as I like to talk about the game, as positive as I, as I like to talk about Gambit. When I'm playing with my friends or clanmates, it doesn't seem as boring because we're all cracking jokes and, you know, being silly and ridiculousness. But there are times when I'm within that freelance and I just feel like I'm just kind of on autopilot because I've played it so much. Yeah. Referring back to what you were talking about, uh, about Season of the Drifter, Dan, I actually soloed that entire Reckoner grind. Oh, God. <laughs> that is okay. the first thing my clanmates say about me. They're so you're like, that person. I got yeah. you. Yeah, I, guys, I'm 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 that person. So yeah. when it comes to being in the freelance playlist, I'm so used to doing everything that I had to do during that time that I'm just so desensitized to it. Mm -hmm. And it's just like it feels mindless. Like I can literally just do it over and over again and just have no reaction because I played it for so much, especially with the amount that I've done prior. But I do agree with what Rev is saying completely about the fact that the heavy brick does slow everything down, mm -hmm. especially in those high moments of tension when the other opposing team has their prime evil. It's halfway to health. We're just getting ours up. But then like two team members are like, wait, let me go get that heavy real quick across the other side of Mars. And it definitely slows everything down with getting to the envoys and getting started with that DPS or even getting the invader across to actually hit that Xeno phase that we were all mm -hmm. talking about. <laughs> So I do agree that it does, while actually no, while the heavy brick situation, it does have its benefits, it does slow everything down. Mm. You know, that one person's got to go from one side of the map to the other because the high value target was, cle was cleared towards the edge of the map. Yeah. And then it, they're rushing over to get to the next phase and then boom, next day, the phase after that is starting. So I could definitely see where that's coming uh, coming across and slowing everything down. Um, I'm used to the days of putting on the uh, heavy ammo scavengers and just yeah. hoping to get mm -hmm. something. But that that can definitely make it boring. And that mindlessness of just constantly going through the freelance playlist can definitely make it boring for me as well. well I don't hate it right now, but mm, it, it is what it is. <laughs> it's something where like yesterday when I was running, I didn't mind how mindless it was because it like... I, I was hopping into the freelance playlist. I was the, I was streaming, so maybe like I, I will say we're all atypical players here. Um, right. And I was streaming. I was just kind of talking with the chat and just kind of like catching them up on live things while 
while I was playing. And I didn't necessarily mind that there wasn't a lot going on. Um, I did realize that Glaive's probably getting a bop is maybe a good thing because I definitely took out a couple of invaders <laughs> with that and because I shielded up and just stabbed. Yep. But mm-hmm. um, I will note that like I, I didn't feel like invasions were too um, in, in like a couple hours of gameplay I didn't feel like invasions were too oppressive and the heavy ammo economy I could see them just doing away with that and that kind of being the thing like that would present a bigger issue though with um forerunner mm-hmm. Izanagi's burden okay um becoming the go-tos because Izanagi can four times no matter what um Forerunner is a fantastic tool for invading. It's very mm-hmm. versatile. Uh, you get a lot of ammo at the start when you spawn in. Way more than a PvP amount because you have to balance it for PvE yeah. as well. Um, so, as much as I don't want to fight to fight four Xenophages again, the, the, the alternative is way worse. Mm-hmm. Because... Xeno, you you have to build into the one tap if you really really want it. But yeah. if you uh, if if it's not if the invader's not buffed by any fashion or the defenders aren't, it's a two tap. You can fight that because you can register where you got hit from and try to react at the vet bare minimum. Mm-hmm. But it's an ugly body shot. You're done. That's that, that's plain and simple. Doesn't matter what you're doing. You're done. Gotcha. And you and you won't even see it. So the alternative is worse. Mm-hmm. Right. So right. the the game mode that has the positives of both the PVE and PVP also has its negatives. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. picture this: if if you're on trials and the last guy standing had picked up your two friends' special ammo books, right? Mm-hmm. He can now body shot you. How do you fight that? Mm. Mm-hmm. In Gambit, he has twenty rounds. He can he can waste a few before he gets you if he really yeah. wants. Yeah. So that's why you don't. That's why there's a different meta in Gambit because you got the PVE ammo economy with the PVP benefits mm-hmm. of it all. Right. Like, what if I could just main as an to, uh, to uh, against other players? It's absolutely terrifying. Mm. Right. So, like, do, um, Mac, do you have anything to add add to that? No, not at all. No, mm. that's a really good comparison and like very thought provoking for me. Even I'm I'm the adapt player, so I'm I'm like thinking about that and running that all back in my head right now. Like, damn, he's kind of right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn, yeah. I'm thinking about forerunners. I'm like hearing them go off in my head. Like, <laughs> <laughs> think about just getting right. popped by a few. <laughs> pop, 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 yeah. I had a muppet bring Arby in last weekend. I was fuming. Oh yeah, like, leave that, leave that in PvP, bro. We don't need that here. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so, I guess it, like oh, we've been airing a lot of our grievances <laughs> like, uh, so far. Is we there, have. I swear, I love it. <laughs> is there anything? Is there anything that you you've enjoyed from it this season? Like, is is there anything that it does well? Uh, it promotes build crafting a lot more because Gambit takes on a lot of PvP values. Mm-hmm. For instance, uh, if you've been mailing the Heart of Most Light build, and you should, um, you will notice that your timers are cut in half. Mm. Because that is the PvP values. Same goes for anything uh, like Bomber-esque or Utility Kicks Up because they have to think where, uh, what if a player is on the field sort of shenanigans so the balance of that way so it's good to see like some pve uh builds push to the limit a bit by having the timers cutting half or their ability values cutting half that way you manage it a lot more and you actually get a greater understanding of what your build can do and it's and its strengths and weaknesses that is very true because it's funny how you say that because i've been playing more and more with the little bit of the match game element that's within the envoys because honestly, as, as bad as it sounds, as guilty as it sounds, I used to ignore that shit. Yeah. 
So, like, now that I'm really starting to, like, actively pay attention to the smallest details to get my get my fire team, my random team of three other people, the upper hand into the match so we could just hurry up and get it going. You know, like, I, I have a loadout that I'm very comfortable with running. Um, I like to run Wither Horde with a auto rifle with mm. the subclass of my choice, whether it's a solar auto rifle such as the Summoner or, you know, uh, Gnawing Hunger with Void. You know, you, you get you get it from here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it's been kind of testing my limit when it comes to that and playing with the little bits of that, you know. Like, for example, I'll run Solar and maybe I'll run, you know, like an Arc Heavy such as Storm Chaser with that just to get a little bit of more DPS with it along with taking out that one Arc Envoy. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I would run Void and throw a Suppressor Grenade and I'd follow it up with, you know, Suppressor Grenade on the Void Envoy and then follow it up with, you know, the Summoner onto the Solar one. Boom, we're going into DPS. You know, Prime Evil's Compromise. Let's get it. Yeah. You know, just finding ways to... Give my team the randoms that I'm never going to talk to again. Maybe I'll match make with them again just to get them the upper hand, just to get them to like Gambit a little bit. Because my, I, I'm just trying to get people to like the game mode more and have more fun with it. Because mm -hmm. I feel like the perception changes when people have fun. I've had clan mates say to me over and over again, you know, I used to hate Gambit till I started playing it with you. But yeah. you make it fun. You know, I've help people get dredge in a few times if they wanted it and you know i we just have fun with it you know i i, I crack jokes if i'm getting smacked in the head with a layman arc or something mm -hmm. like that because I, I feel like the element of having fun is sometimes forgotten not just in gambit but in destiny as a whole and it's like dude let's bring that shit back yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i try to bring that to gambit as a start because it's something that i have knowledge and i'm the most confident in. Mm -hmm. and like yeah, for for me it was like I I wanted to make sure that I played some gambit like that not just for pinnacle cuz that's pretty much like been my experience with gambit is if I if I'm on the pinnacle grind then I'm I'm going for I'm going to have to play gambit at some point to do that. Um and then later on in the season it's usually when it's like okay, well, it's the last few weeks. I have these seasonal challenges that I need to do in order to like get the the bright dust that i want or to mm -hmm. to stack stack these bounties it is it is a formality for me to play gambit most of the time and so it's like i i should play it that way i have some impression coming into this conversation and some route to talk yeah. about it that wasn't strictly like i i hate gambit um which like is is something of like a like a persona, but not. I I don't think it's necessarily true. I think that I I I understand that as a game mode that they are they have been trying to improve. I think the the fire that's going on in PvP is currently larger than the one that is in Gambit, and maybe they're trying to put that one out faster so that it because it takes pieces of pvp with it it then helps to alleviate some of the pressure on gambit but i do you guys think that we're going to have to they're going to have to address gambit at some point yes the same More way than they have yeah like the i know they were trying to do changes in um starting witch queen to make it more accessible mm -hmm. like there's a clear defined path like as much as i've riffed on the heavy ammo box is like if you want your heavy you clear that wave yeah that is the rule so it's to help uh some new people come into it um and so they don't get they don't feel lost like oh how am i it used to be how am i getting this heavy ammo well you're just killing stuff that's it mm -hmm. um so what it, it was never meant to be like who could stockpile as much uh, that much heavy because it used to get to the point where everybody had seven truth rockets, mm -hmm. or they all had like fifteen sleeper sleeper bolts. Mm -hmm. So it just came down, came down to who can fire the trigger the fastest. Now it's what does your build do? What can it do? Your heavy ammo is now meant to be uh, secondary because you don't need to worry about that anymore. Yeah. you know what you need to do to go get that. Mm -hmm. Now, how fast can you get that is what's occurring. And it's good. 
in its own right. But the way they slowed it down with, like you have to do that to get your heavy ammo back. When you stop, you, that momentum slowly it goes down for me when I when I have to stop to get that heavy brick. The health gates on the boss. Why would you remove the only health gate your boss and apply it to the rest? I don't understand that. Mm. That was the only thing I could think of when it comes to that was the old Titan method, which you could still do, by the way. Um, prior to Witch Queen, which was literally two shoulder charges and it's dead. Yeah. That was it. Uh, you put tractor cannon on it and you went to town at times two. Primeval Slayer. Now you can do that at times four if you're mm-hmm. quick enough. Um, so there's been a lot of changes coming into this year with Gambit, which have just had a, many of the people who used to love it had scratched their heads. Mm. Whereas prior to that, yeah, it had its problems, but weren't exacerbated like they were right now. Like, problem was heavy ammo before. Everybody gets heavy ammo now. Problems times by four now every time you go and face the other team. Mm-hmm. So I don't have to watch out for one Muppet. I need to watch out for all the Muppets. Great. Right. So Gambit can be good. Mm-hmm. It, can be, it, it, it could be so much better. There's been often times when I've taken friends in, when we've just had a laugh, and they've kind of forgotten what they used to hate or dislike about the game mode. Because right now it just feels like it's the player that makes Gambit fun, not the game mode. Mm-hmm. And you have to find the right player. Do you all, do you think that maybe we're just in that part of the season, or th- like in that? part of the cycle of DLC drops? Because it feels like this same feeling happens not only season over season, but also on a yearly rotation now. Like, are you referring to, like, the dry part of the season where, you know, the storyline is kind of finished and then Mm -hmm. everything in terms of as much endgame content as one can do is, like, done and there's just, like pinnacle grind is that what you're referring to and then like you know we see the social media Mm -hmm. you know i'm leaving posts come in and things like that it it feels it feels like we saw this same thing happen a season before yeah uh uh when witch queen came out like the season before witch queen not the immediate Mm -hmm. one but the one before that it felt like yeah we were seeing a lot lot of burnout then too then going into that season and then DLC drop, there's a whole bunch of stuff to do and that kind of reset the button a little bit. Do you feel like yeah. Gambit kind of is suffering Gambit. on that cycle too? Gambit's or maybe I'm not asking that question years. correctly. Mm-hmm. Like it's like, obviously we know about the PVP community not having a map for almost 500 days. I think mm-hmm. it was, <laughs> um, <laughs> Gambit hasn't had a map since Prime. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've been Here waiting to bring this up, Rev. <laughs> so we've had maps taken away. Like, granted, we had seven maps in mm. Gambit and, and Prime combined. They take away two because, and I still remember the twelve. Like it was due to popularity. The popularity was Prime was better, so all the Prime maps stayed. We had the Forsaken one. Uh, the um, and the uh, Dreaming City one, mm-hmm. both leave. Both are actually really good maps. Um, yeah. uh, and they offer surprise routes for both Defender and Attacker. Mm-hmm. So, <sighs> the fact they took, they took them away well, still kind of stings. The fact we haven't had anything else since still kind of stings. And all we had is rule set changes. Mm-hmm. Uh, then they've they've added like mild match game onto the envoys. They've health gated all the primevals. They've made heavy ammo abundant for everybody so long as you clear your ways fast enough. Um, they've lessened the uh, invader portals so now you have to make them count, which is good. Invaders do mm-hmm. have the capacity to turn a fight around if done right. So, but uh, admittedly, I do miss the days of just been able to just swarm the other team with invasions i, I miss those days they were fun mm-hmm. um, <laughs> um but 
you have to make these two invasion portals count. I do one of the changes they did make, which I do like, is um, when the primeval is spawned, it takes away the invader portal for that team. Mm. That is a fantastic idea because when it stops the snowball effect of really good teams permanently keeping the other team down when that's not needed. Mm -hmm. So every team deserves to catch up. And if you're good enough, you deserve that dub. Even if you come back from a really hard spanking from a, from getting four owed. So <clears throat> that's one of the changes that I actually do like about Gambit, but the rest has been head scratches and where's like, where's any new maps? Like, there's some that could have been done in the Splicer domain. There's some that could be done in, mm -hmm. the, in the Witch Queen's domain. Uh, hell, even the moon. Yeah. I, that we just I, don't have. Right. Yeah. Go ahead, Mac. Circling back to the whole map thing, I mm -hmm. still grieve to this day about the Dreaming City map because that was actually one of my favorite maps. It, it was really, cool. like, you know. Mm -hmm. Test your thought process, you know, whether regardless of whatever role you were playing in Gambit, you know, it gave the mo the nastiest amount of range if you were invading with a sniper, and that was just mm -hmm. awesome. But if you're if you're at a late night and you're playing and you're half asleep, you jump through the wrong portal and you're in the wrong section, it could definitely <laughs> fuck you up. Yeah. Because we have no mm -hmm. <laughs> section <laughs> invaders here and they're right in front of you. It's like a horror movie. But back to the whole maps thing, I we haven't had a map in so long. Like, I feel like by the time we get a new map, I'm going to become a skeleton. But mm. I really wish that we got a new map. Uh, can I just say that I was a little let down when Beyond Light came out and mm. we did not receive a map on Europa or anything of that nature. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I was hoping for something like that. You, you know, I was hoping for even getting a Witch Queen map. We didn't get that. And I didn't think about the moon, but... God, imagine having a Gambit map on the moon, like in that Starlit Keep area. Mm -hmm. Just like that would be the sick. thought of just, ha oh, man, man, just it's right there. It's right mm -hmm. there. Or even having it in a similar area to where the map is for Crucible's Witch, the Witch Queen map and Crucible, the Throne World map. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Like that, that gives so much, that would give so much more to Gambit and keep it exciting because, you know, Mars and within lore was, you know, was gone by the pyramids, was dead, mm -hmm. did away by the pyramids. How is how are we still playing on Mars? Yeah. I don't correct me if I'm wrong and if I have missed this, but I wish that there was some sort of lore to explain that. You know, yeah. we've got all this lore explaining as to why the Leviathan went away until we started seeing what the hell Callus was really, really doing, unless you were reading the lore. But we didn't get an explanation as to why the hell are we, were we still on Mars, you know? It makes more sense now with what we have with the throne world. But yeah. before that, it the just, like, made from it a okay. story perspective. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It just didn't make they sense made it okay. it's, Yeah, just hand wave it. <laughs> like, is Red there, is there a weapon okay, I can read? Fine. A lore No. <laughs> <laughs> they just showed up and were like, what's up? And then took that spot. Um, what... So, uh, we got a little bit into strategies there. There was a question that was from, uh, Witty, uh, Witty Kef. He says, Gambit is one of my, the few modes that is in a better state than it was a year ago. Um, I'd like to hear strats to enjoy freelance and make the most of the mode, whether, uh, solo or with a fire team. What, what strats or like tips would you give to people in this current state of Gambit to have a successful we time? send the invader. Forget your 15 modes. If that bar is touching that segmented side of it, send the invader. That's the biggest blocker you can send. Send the invader. Please open the portal. <laughs> okay. Mech? Yes. <laughs> I do agree. Um, if if you're playing, so if you're playing with a fire team, definitely send the invader when you get that forty. Like, don't mm -hmm. wait on it. You know, don't wait, especially if you start to see that cute little gray bar start to really get bigger and bigger. Because if you somebody's not going within a moment, you're gonna start hearing broom, 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 broom. Like yeah, the invaders yeah. come. Their invaders coming. They're gonna take the upper hand. Their moats are going to drain out of our our bank and go to their bank. Mm 
Mm. Like, send that invader as soon as you can if you're with a fire team and you have somebody that's going to be confident with it. Or, hell, somebody who's just trying to get Army of One in practice. At least you sent somebody. Maybe mm -hmm. they'll get one and they'll get, hopefully, they get the guy that had the 15 and they denied their moat. You know, mm -hmm. you may get lucky. It's one of those things where, you know, even if you're not confident with an invading and you're not confident with PvP at all, give it a shot. You might get somebody. You might get that Army of One. Now, as far as solo goes, have a loadout that's definitely going to have like clear ad. Mm -hmm. um, for example, circling back to what I use the Wither Horde and Summoner that I typically use, or the Wither Horde and Gnawing Hunger that I use, that Wither Horde is going to clear out those ads, for example, those thrall that are running at you because they're just going to into that hole. Mm -hmm. You know, not to mention Wither Horde doing the damage that it does on Taken, that that's already an added plus. Just having those constant pools of blight in random places definitely helps you just start to get those running kind of ads at you. Or if you're good at doing the direct hits, that's something that is outstanding. But if you want to play more role-based and you have those people that play role-based, definitely do that. Have fun with it. And of mm -hmm. course, have good communication because we're all gamers here. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was finding myself yesterday being the goalkeeper. <laughs> just just i oh, would grab country. yeah i would i would grab moats occasionally but for the most part i was like all right i got this glaive and i'm just gonna get to stab it right here by the bank it's gonna be great and so i just stabbed away and it was fantastic You're already a century. it was a lot it was you know what i should have gone for that i don't know if i did that back when those <laughs> were available <laughs> but goddamn that was a lot of fun i just i i don't just like playing Gambit in season 18. I just love stabbing. Any any other tips and tricks? Um, you essentially want a build that can do the majority of the work. Mm. So for me, that's Caliban's hand. Mm. Um, the reason why is because Marks on Goldie is objectively the best super to invade with and anti with if you really need to. It's a hit scan super that can dome you no matter the distance. Mm. So. Why not? It doesn't matter that you can float across the map with a dawn blade. I can clip your wings before you even notice <laughs> it. Um, I use chill clip fusion or mm -hmm. one two punch charge, depending on what I want, because one two does actually work with explosive knife. Um, uh, I've got a healing nade for myself and teammates if need be. I run Xeno for anti and invader purposes, and currently I'm running Brigand's Law with Volt Shot. Because jolting a target is stupidly thick damage, and you should do that. Um, this build generally allows me to do everything all at once if I need to. I can clear waves in the blink of an eye with Caliban. I can get an evader or spawn because of Zeno or my Goldie, and I can invade because of the same reasons if I need to. Yes, so, Zeno for invading. <laughs> I hate it, but it's it gets the job done, so why not? <laughs> Well, you have, can't beat him, join him. Yeah, you have that. You also have the seasonal challenge that is like, hey, use machine guns here. And it kind of plays oh. perfectly <laughs> into I, I, Oh, I rolled my eyes so hard at that. <laughs> um, well, we were talking about it a little bit yesterday. And it's like, while I may not play Gambit all the time, I may actually play it more next season. Um, but the inability of the seasonal challenges to take into account what you've already done for those that late in the season feels like certainly FOMO-y uh, like more so than some certain of the PVE ones that that I tangle with it it definitely feels like hey you should play Gambit now Gambit Gambit for the next three weeks <laughs> like in order yeah. to get these done, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> what are your guys' thoughts on that? Um, there are some challenges in Gambit, which like the hey, go and get a bunch of LMG kills in mm -hmm. Gambit. What's the best weapon for Gambit? Oh, it's Xenophage. Great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. I think the reason why they put that in is because of Thunderlord, actually. Mm. Um, that would make sense. Yeah. <laughs> Thematically. Um, <laughs> and if the seasonal challenge, obviously the seasonal challenges are red for, for the season. You never have to do them within the week. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a, I'm, I'm a muppet and I do them in a the day because 
I love yeah, it. Because you're you. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I wish there were more just. They were way more team inclusive. Mm hmm. Like the further bounties, some of the seasonal challenges are team based. I wish they were way more like that. Mm -hmm. Especially if they were like, "Hey, get a bunch of kills." Like Biomi's up the threshold, but if it's if it's for people uh, uh, like going for that, it's going to get done a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Gambit doesn't really have the best of impressions on people right now, so why are we making them play it? Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't. It, that doesn't seem fair to the player's time mm. versus their opinion. Like, even I'm reluctant to enter gambit in some days, and the uh, other day I just I was bored and I went into freelance and just got over and just started invading. So I used to play gambit for fun, but yeah, not so much anymore. And the seasonal challenges do keep me uh, like mildly engaged at the start of the season, but mm -hmm. it kind of tapers off when they're done because. Not gonna lie, I'm more there for the bright dust that challenge is gonna give me rather than the excitement in front of Gambit. Yeah. That that's where I find myself with that too. Is mm. definitely going for the bright dust. Right. And, and that's it. Yeah, and, and there there are a lot of people that definitely do that. As far as like the seasonal challenges itself, um those I just happen to get done, and I'm just like, oh, just passively. Damn, okay, <laughs> shit, okay, get that's, that that done. I got a bunch of kills in Gambit, bank kill, moat repeat, whatever the hell it's yeah. called. Rock, rock and roll, we got it. But I do get messages from friends that are like, hey, it's like the last week of the season. I need to finish my Gambit challenges. You want to mm -hmm. want to party up real quick? And I'm just like, all right, man, no problem. You want me to make this painless for you? Let's do it. Like, because like. That's what it seems like it's become for a lot of people. So your feelings, Dan, are very valid about that voice in your ear yelling, hey, you should play Gambit now. Because yeah. I feel like that's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. That is definitely a lot of people. And I don't know if, like, I don't know if these uh, these other people are just, you know, doing it and they're just like, rada, rada, rada. Like the messages that I get when people want to play with me about mm -hmm. it. But I don't know if maybe making Gambit as an optional pinnacle would help mm. in any way like you know have it for the people that love to play it but not make it a pressing matter for the people that don't want to play it or maybe not add it as part of the seasonal challenges because remember that year in review that everybody was posting their screenshots where it mm -hmm. shows the percentages and everybody was just like ha 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 mine's one yeah. percent they should just delete gambit forever and do mm. this blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. like oh man Mine was 28%. I yeah. need to go outside. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> well, I, I feel it, um, something that was no, brought no. up. Something that was brought up when in that post that I made. Where it was like, just just turn it into a seasonal event. Or some, or like into like a rotator event. Much like Iron Banner. Some of the concern there was like, well, then they deprioritize it. And then it's like, like, then why even have it? was mm -hmm. some of the messages yeah. that I was getting. And, like, I, I can see that 100%. But, like, um, somebody did riff on my on that idea and was like, well, why not make, like, Gambit Prime that kind of thing where it, that shows yes. up and allows allows for some fun times for for Gambit the same way that, that PvP does with uh, with Iron Banner. What would your thoughts be on on something like that? Um, if it doesn't stress Bungie out, then why mm -hmm. not? It would probably bring more and further engagement back because one thing that I one complaint that I do see because I do tend to look at these and try to figure out why people hate Gambit in general is you know bring back Gambit Prime and shit I agree bring back mm -hmm. Gambit Prime because you know the perks of the armor and things like that were definitely fun and if it, if one person on each team is wearing each set of armor it does a lot you know mm -hmm. it definitely does a lot for the game mode itself so I would love to see it back but if it's something where it's gonna you know, cause too much space in the in the game or whatever the case may be. Yeah, definitely bring it back like an Iron Banner type deal. 
Because that would bring further engagement back into it. That would bring that the people that want to see Gambit Prime back. And the people that love Gambit, you know, mm -hmm. sure as hell would like to play that too. Because we're already in there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. What about you, Riff? Prime, Prime was fun back then when being overpowered was an acceptable way to play. Mm -hmm. To the point of... Um, when you send the invader over, he legitimately locked the bank by just being on the other side. Like, if you really wanted to be an ass, like, you could hide for the full 30 seconds. They can't bank. It doesn't matter what they try to do. They need to find you and kill you because you just blocked the bank by sh literally existing. Mm -hmm. Done it. The, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, the, on, uh, on the PvE side, the Reaper set was the most powerful set of armor there is like oh you can send a 20 mode blocker i can i can spawn special ammo on my first tier perk on that armor mm -hmm. and i can then debuff anything that's considered an ultra or uh, considered an ultra mm -hmm. uh, and literally you turn whatever that ultra is into a red bar effectively by just literally shooting anything at it it completely nullified wave bosses and uh, hvts so like when back in prime days when you used to do that you'd have one invader set of three reapers you didn't need a sentry because your invader would anti the their invader mm -hmm. I, I, I don't need to mark where they are if i can manipulate the spawns to the point where i know exactly where you're going to spawn mm -hmm. so if, if prime was to come back the armor perks would need to be reworked and or nerfed um one example would be the evader has to be within 15 meters of the of the other team's bank to mm -hmm. lock it that way if it is locked you know exactly where he is which yeah. is an invader's greatest strength is trying to be unseen the moment you know where they are that's it they've got no tricks left up their sleeves right you know where they are go and hunt them down so Prime had its Prime was fun. Prime was mm -hmm. also overpowered. Prime had a lot of health gates. Mm -hmm. So it, it having the thirty second burn phase was interesting as well. Like you had uh, when you killed the end boys, you had your little timer that started in that yeah. pool. Oh that little pool, uh, yeah. And and you did whatever damage you could on that and then you went on to the next you get your new stacks of primeval slayer and you carry on with an increased damage uh, with an increased damage multiplier to it so we we effectively have that now mm -hmm. with how the envoys are like they all spawn at the three fronts um they give you your next tier of primeval slayer uh, but it only, go, it only goes up in increments of two like you can't attack a primeval or primeval one three or five game doesn't let you mm. right whereas you could do that before right so it's um yeah it's a bit, a bit of a conundrum like yeah having part it, it would be i think it'd be a lot more it would be a big bigger headache than what it's worth to try and bring prime back mm. without even considering nerfing some of these sets and bringing yeah. them in line yeah, there's definitely going to be like a double-edged sword when it comes to that, especially with how much the game has evolved now since Prime had come out. Mm -hmm. And that may not be a double-edged sword that I'm willing to deal with from a solo player standpoint. But yeah, like as much as I would love to have that invader, that invader and that reaper armor back, I could see where that can get a little get a little shaky in terms of that circumstances, you know. Um I also just look at it from the like I look at it from the aspect of just myself more than I do working with other people because I play by myself quite a lot. But in terms of like seeing how that could definitely make a team more overpowered than they should be mm -hmm. would definitely get frustrating for a solo player like myself who can't always have that communication of having those other people take on those other roles unless I get the luck of the draw within the freelance playlist. Yeah. So, I mean, even if they were to bring Prime back, they wouldn't be able to do it in freelance because that, on top of it being overpowered and having to nerf some things, because that would just be a kick. Mm -hmm. That would be a massive kick in the butt, you know? Like, <laughs> after a long day of work, getting out at 5 o'clock, and you're doing Gambit for your seasonal challenges, and you're just getting your ass beat. 
<laughs> Some people are into that. Um, I mean, I soloed a record, so maybe I am a little. Yeah. <laughs> um, Faye of the Fay asks, I'm moving into audience questions. I feel like we've kind of sure. touched, we've, we've touched on, a, on, on the highlights, a lot of the good and a lot of the, like, a lot of the, eh, <laughs> of like our feelings on what Gambit is this season. Um, but Faye of the Fay asks, um, what weapons should return as Gambit loot? And were pinnacle weapons, um, were pinnacle weapons or ritual weapons more fun to grind for? Give me hush. <laughs> <laughs> On sunset hush. <laughs> Give me hush. Um, so. I want 21% delirium back. <laughs> you take that as sunset. That was my favorite machine gun for the longest time. <laughs> what What about those weapons were made them like favorites of yours? So for, for Hush, it was the fact it was a rapid fire bow. Like mm -hmm. No other bow could compete with it until Garden of Salvation's Accrued Redemption came along, and you needed literally the uh, the fastest string, elastic, compact arrow, shell for the reload. You needed Archer's Tempo and Rapid Hit and a Draw Time Masterwork. You needed that specific role to compete with Hush, and it mm -hmm. still required you to get five crit hits in a row on multiple targets or a single one to get that fast. Whereas Hush, you, you hit fire it and it goes. And it's one of the most accurate weapons in the game from the hip as well. It taught, It's taught me how to use a bow properly in this game. You're not meant to really, really ADS them unless there's extreme ranges. You're meant to hit fire a bow. Mm. doesn't matter what the perks say. So thanks to Hush, that's why I now play bows. And Hush is a fantastic tool for this. Oh, <laughs> Funny how you say that, because mine was the, uh, it's a Crucible one, but mine was the vow for that in terms of bows. Mm -hmm. Man, never forget. Um, <laughs> as, far as, as far as Delirium goes, um, that was a weapon that I used to invade with without, for the first time when I was a Blueberry, without having to use a rocket launcher or something along those lines. Like, and on top of that, when Primeval Damage used to be so much easier in the regular old Gambit mode, man, I used to I used to do so much damage. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so it could be more of a nostalgia standpoint than thinking about it in terms of the loadout itself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just takes me back to takes me back to the good old times when I was just sitting on my couch, quarantined at home, just... <laughs> 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 like, when they took that one away, I was just like, oh, you know? <laughs> a a little, lot of the weapons, we were just like, oh. <laughs> a little piece of me died today. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got these ice would, magic now. <laughs> I would like to see Breakneck back. Yeah. Break. Or at least or at least Onslaught. But Onslaught has to run with Rampage. So it would need a, to uh, uh, a tweak. Mm. But I would like to see Breakneck back. That was a fun assault rifle. Oh, yeah. Uh, for me. Uh, before I got my grubby little mitts on the clues. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there were... Yeah, like, there were a lot of Gambit weapons that became meta weapons for a little while. Is there anything in the loot pool now that is like something that people are chasing? Yes to year. Yes to year. Pulse rifle yeah. Okay. It, it's the first 390 poles with Desperado for a start. Could have the Outlaw Desperado combo yeah. as well. Um, uh, bottom dollar was when it was uh, the 120, 110 meta. Um, a go to. Borrowed time because of all the SMG, because of all, a bunch of other things have come down. Love borrowed time. In the, uh, in the power creep, borrowed mm -hmm. time has now obviously come up. Um, so that is sometimes a replacement for funnel web in PvP because 750 is wreck for joint. And if you don't know that, use Terraba. Um <laughs> So... Gambit actually has some fantastic gear for both sides of the game, as it should, because that's what both sides yeah. of the game meet. But like, these weapons need to compete in both sandboxes. So, yeah, there's there's a lot of them. There's a few of them. Um, don't go for crowd pleaser. Nobody likes crowd pleaser. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the sound of it just echoes in my head. I'm like, dude, no. <laughs> I'm like, stop. <laughs> 
But you honestly, Rev said it like you you said it perfectly. The yesteryear, the bottom dollar, like borrowed time. I, I love the borrowed time. Mm. She's a she's a beaut. <laughs> 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 but yeah, you you summed it up. But uh, I I agree. I agree about that one. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, so Michelle. Uh. At, at, AKA uh, at Madame Thibault, uh asks, should the Dredgen title requirements be adjusted? Uh, was created based on a multi-round gambit and don't think they changed it. And he feels like the protect the runner, which is 75 motes for one person was more attainable in earlier seasons. Yes, absolutely. It should, it should be adjusted. 75 motes is such a team requirement now for protect the runner. It is honestly a mission and a half um maybe lower to 60 65 maybe um that way they still get they have to get the half banked uh, as a requirement mm-hmm. um people need also need to be reminded is it, you guys can die if you don't have moats on you but the moment that person dies with a moat that's it runs over mm-hmm. like, like please remember that guys <laughs> <laughs> like, like we've done I'm pretty sure me and Beck have done a fair few protective runners. <laughs> so <yeah. laughs> um, look on Mech's face right now. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of times I hear No, like they, they can't die. They've got no moats, my guy. He's allowed to kick the proverbial bucket. It's okay. <laughs> like if I had to make like a chart of the people I've helped get dredge in, I ask them. You know what? What do you need? Like what? What's left on your list? Protect the runner. Protect the runner. Protect, protect the runner. I'm um, mm. just like, all right. Mm. Well, let me know so I can get ready. By get ready, I mean mentally prepare myself <laughs> for it because mm-hmm. it, it can be a kick in the ass. Like there will be times where you'll get it. You'll get half bank. Boom. Like runs over. Like mm. it makes you wanna. It makes you wanna pull out your ghost and just get the fuck out of there. Like you, you, it's like, oh my god. You know when you finally. You do it so many times, and you finally get to the point where you die. It's it definitely sucks. Yeah. But maybe yeah. like still keep that, but I would say still keep something like that, but drop the number down. Maybe mm-hmm. I I don't know. Drop the number down with that, because seventy five is definitely not as attainable as it used to be, especially with going up to a hundred now. I think in regular, I don't know if it was in like regular Gambit as to when I got that one done for the first time, but I definitely got it done before any changes were made to the game mode. And mm-hmm. I uh, doing it for other people is definitely, I could be here sweating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I get a half bank, like I'm lucky nowadays. I get more massacres than I do half bank. <laughs> I just like stabbing. Um... Fury QED asks, um, do you think having a constant portal open when one team has a primeval and the other doesn't creates issues? Absolutely. Yeah. Just just like you are meant to have a catcher mechanic if you're behind. Mm-hmm. That's why you can invade whenever the, the enemy primeval is up. You should also be punished. Granted, the meta is not really favorable right now, yeah. but you should also be fun- punished if you mess up the invade. Your objective is to go and hunt down four Muppets, and you have wall hacks to go do so. You have the tools to do it. So 1v4. If you fail to use your tools correctly, then why should you be allowed a second chance immediately? That's right. not, That shouldn't be the case. Granted, there is, I think there is definitely some bugs when it comes to the portal at the moment, because it it's meant to be 40 seconds mm-hmm. between each invade. But sometimes it feels a lot faster, especially when you fail an invade. It feels like it's more like 25. Mm-hmm. But, often, but sometimes there appears to be an overlap of portals where it will never open up again, even after a successful or failed invade. And that's it. Like The invades, as I said earlier, can turn a fight around. They can stop a win. So having that option to constantly just keep on going over, that's that's not on because how is the other team meant to win if they're constantly fending off that Muppet with a Xenophage? Mm-hmm. And when he's out of ammo, they send the next guy full, full of Xenophage, and so on and so forth. Like a Gamma game is what fifteen minutes, I believe, mm-hmm. uh, before we go, actually, before we average, before it goes to time. So, 
if you really want to, if you really, if you really want to be in a gambit game that goes to time, be my guest. That portal can stay permanently open then, because that's what will happen. That primeval's not gonna die because you're gonna keep fending off the muppet that keeps keeps rocking through. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm and I feel like right now, like the game gives enough chances for the fire team to catch up. And it's uh -huh. like, why why would the portal need to stay open? You know, I agree with what you're saying, Rev. Like, you know, if you fuck up that invade, that's it. That that's on that's on the team. That's on you if you're solo. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, they they shouldn't be given that much of a chance to constantly constantly invade because, like you said, you know, the fire team on the other side is just fighting off that one Muppet with a Xenophage. You know, um, and on top of that, it just. It takes one person away from DPS on the other side, and while it could borrow more time for the team that's struggling, it's it's like you know you're given enough chances as it is. Mm -hmm. Um, my final question for the night, uh, before we get into closing thoughts and and letting people know at home where they can find you. Um. If you could change, this comes from Monty, Mad Monty MN. Um, mm -hmm. If you could change one thing about Gambit, whether it's an improvement or removal of an existing feature or uh, or the addition of something totally new, what would it be? New maps. New, just, even just one or two. Just, just spare a new map, please. Mm. Honestly. <laughs> like, I, I just... Please, sir. <laughs> Please, sir, we can want I some have maps. Some, can I have some Europa, please? Yeah. Can I have some Throne Well? I'm you so know, sorry, just... Rev. I'm so sorry. Oh, Anyways. I'm sorry. <laughs> we love you. Um, but honestly, uh, new maps. One or two, if that. Um, for me, it's a, it's hard because moving heavy breeds a new diabolical meta. Mm -hmm. Moving health gates means that really organized teams can melt on a times two again. Have more gambit labs. Have mm. more modes to test within gambit. Rule sets to follow. Removal of said items. Like let's test a no heavy gambit. Let's test a always open portal when the enemy primeval is up. We've only had two. And one of them was let's just have the invader perk where standing on top of a bank drains moats. And the other one was if you get if my team gets forty, their portal opens. Like, yeah. I like the idea of the of the portal flip. That but did cool. you really need to test the old Gambit Prime perk, the capstone perk of standing on it and draining the bank? We already knew how that worked. Mm -hmm. So, give us more rules and game modes within Gambit which we haven't seen yet. That's what I would like. Um, so you saying that just sparked in my mind. I mean, we have the mm -hmm. PvP mode where everybody gets a, a rocket launcher. And... <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, Dan, I am really fucking good at that game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay at I'm it. I'm jealous. <laughs> I gotta remember to hit people when they're close to walls and aim at where they're going and not where they were. Right. And remember, you can you can detonate it early. Yeah, you can just detonate it early. It yeah. I just so shoot get and this. scream. <laughs> so get this. What about that for Gambit? Listen, Dan, I I'll love you. I'll take my check of the mail. I'll take okay, cool, wonderful. Um, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, imagine a Gambit mayhem. <laughs> oh, oh man. Oh, so no, funny. not Gambit Mayhem again. I'll just stick on my gallon oars and call it a day. I remember uh, those, uh, those times. Oh, Lord. Just the thought. This is oh, I'm going to be thinking about that all night now. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we'll get into some closing thoughts here. Um, I th we're, it feels like we enjoy the game mode in our own ways. Some of us more than others, <laughs> and some of us see real promise in it. Um, what, um, what do you guys, uh, how are you guys feeling coming out of this conversation? I want hushback. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Um, I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah. Do yeah. You, do you feel like uh, in season 19 we'll see anything that will um, that will change your opinion over season 18? Nope. Hmm. I, I, I kind of feel the same coming into this as I, uh, as I was, so mm. I'm passionate about the game mode, but it's been f- forgotten for so long, and it feels like it, every step taken has been backwards. Mm. Like, I really want to like the game mode. I want my friends to enjoy it as much as I see potential in it, mm-hmm. but it's just not there. It could be a really competitive game mode because you actually can get a comp ban that can affect your PvP mm. by existing two games of Gambit. Why is that there? Like, if you want it to be competitive, then where's the fast-paced nature of it? Yeah, that's that seems to be a lot of the questions surrounding like things this season. Like, it, 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 like, it, like the PvP aspect aside of that, like it, it just it doesn't add up. It's never added up for me. Mm. Like it, you say it's competitive, but the aspirational loop behind it didn't match the meta. Mm. Mountain top hit its mark because it was a great launcher that pointed exactly where you wanted it to go and could kill in one shot. Recluse was absolutely diabolical. Revoker returned around to you, like rewarded you for being an ass with a sniper. We you could be more reckless with it. Mm. Hush, as I said earlier, it taught you how to, it taught me how to use a bow at least. Twenty one percent delirium was just bad. It it was delirious. And I want it back. It is. Fucking <laughs> <good>. <laughs> um, breakneck was, I feel like, an experiment mm. and a good one at the time. But that's all they felt like. They never felt like the pinnacle of Gambit. Mm. Apart from maybe 21%. I'll give it that. Because knocking down three targets for permanent damage buff for the remainder of your mag, probably being roughly about 150 sick. rounds at that point, that's not nice. sick. <laughs> so, yeah, like, like that is a wonderful combination, and I hope we see that more often. So, yeah. I hope Gambit gets some love i hope we get maps i hope we get more experiments i hope we get no heavy please um (laughs) but i it's been so long that that hope's kind of died and i'm just playing it because i just find it fun to mindlessly go in and do something i'm good at that's it right and I agree with you. Gambit can definitely be great within its game mode. Um, and honestly, conversations like this are really great because I feel like, you know, we're having a conversation about the things that can be improved, the things that we're kind of not liking at the moment. We, but we are talking about the things that we're having fun with. We're sharing mm-hmm. laughs about it. It's not a totally negative conversation. And I feel like if we're going to do anything at all to, you know, talk about it on social media and talk about changes made to Gambit, you know, like have maybe maybe more conversations like this need to happen. I mm-hmm. think more of the people that love Gambit instead of, you know, absolutely hating Gambit could definitely have these conversations more and talk about what needs to be changed. And maybe just maybe that will be heard. Mm-hmm. Maybe that will be heard by that one that one bungee employee that's on Twitter that one day. Maybe it'll come across their feet. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, having these constructive conversations instead of just saying delete it. I feel like yeah. would cause a lit some sort of noise, if any at all. Like you know the meme of the of the mom in the pool, and she's got the she's got the kid, and the other one's just like drowning, and this is like making that face like ah help. <laughs> like I feel like we're the one that's going ah help, but we're we're not loud enough, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we we maybe we've got to be a little louder than we have been. But the ones that can say it with constructive criticism instead of just saying, put it in the DCV. Yeah. So I feel good yeah, about this yeah, conversation. Yeah. I feel heard. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, now, where can people find you on the internet? Mick, let's start with you. 
You can definitely find me on Twitter. That is M3CCATR0N. Same thing for Destiny. That is my name on there with a bunch of numbers. If you really want it, just let me know. We could play some Gambit together. Same thing goes for Twitch. But again, I am currently on hiatus, but I'm sure the internet will be notified in some way in <laughs> regards to that. And that, that's where I am. Say hello. Send me. Heck yeah. Rev, what about you? Where can people find you on the internet, sir? They can find me on the internet, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> they can find me on Twitter, uh, if you want. It's uh, Revenant, capital R, and 5 triple three, if you so wish. I don't stream. I don't do YouTube content. So just come for the shit posting and get disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Dan Finity. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and the TikTok at DanFinity, where the eyes are else. You can also catch me three days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash DanFinity, helping Guardians through Pinnacle and in-game PvE activities. If you'd like to support the show, remember to rate and review on your podcast platform of choice. And this show is also listener supported. So if you'd like to give a few bucks a month to keep the lights on, head on over to coffee.com forward slash Danfinity. That is ko-fi.com forward slash Danfinity. All the links are in the notes for the episode. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope you find what you're grinding for. <laughs>